Philippians 4 and 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Verse 7, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Come on and put those hands together. It's time to have church. It's Wednesday evening Bible study at the Cathedral of Faith. Come on and put those hands together. Put those hands together. Put those hands together.
Yes, I owe God, yeah. Yes, I owe God, yeah. Yes, I owe God. Yes, I owe God, yes, I do. Thessalonians. Okay. What's going on here? All right. Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, verse 11. Amen. Second Thessalonians, the first chapter, verse 11. Let's go over there and read. We better stop because I see some millionaires. You had it say amen. Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God 
would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Now, when you talk about faith to believe, it's important for us to understand that there are works and then there are uh, things that you do that are counted as service to the Lord. Amen. So we want to write this down. Amen. I gave you last week the four pillars of your faith. Amen. The four foundations of your faith. Now, where we mess up at many times with faith, when people talk about faith to believe, is that we don't want to do the work. Amen. Like people should be writing stuff down. I tell them all the time, you're not going to be able to retain what I'm teaching you. So therefore, many times you're not going to have the tools to employ and you're going to wonder why sometimes things are off kilter, things are off balance in your life because you have no notes to refer back to. Just like when you go to college, you're not going to get no degree without taking notes. I can tell you that right now. You don't take no notes, you ain't going to get, you got to have copious notes, you got to have, you, want, you go there to take notes. <laughs> Praise God, because when that test comes, trust me, you are not going to be able to remember a semester's worth or, or two to three weeks' worth of all the rigor and all the books you got to read. Amen. And so when you come to church, you want to be able to write this stuff down because sometimes we wonder why we're failing. We may be failing because we don't know how to navigate this life. So Paul here says in Thessalonians, again, wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith. I want you to outline the work of faith because what is that work of faith? Now, I'm teaching this series now called Faith to Believe, and many times the work of faith is where we miss it. God bless y'all for running around the church. God bless you for even showing up, but many times you ain't got no faith to go with none of that stuff you just did. Because you've got to have works of faith in order to really receive from God what it is you've been asking him for. As a matter of fact, many times if we would look back over our life, we would see we don't have no works. We got service, but we don't have no works. Now, as I've been teaching, your service and your works is totally different. Amen? Amen? See, we don't mind doing service or church work. It's when we got to do them faith works that we got a problem with. See, many times we see the church as one big opportunity to perform. But the church is not an opportunity to perform, amen. The church is not a place where you're going to be discovered for your so-called talent, amen. This is a place to come and worship the Lord. And if the Lord blesses you through your service, then fine. But many times we have convoluted and we have mistaken service for works. So here, Paul says you need to do the work of faith. What is the work of faith? Let's talk about it. And the reason why many times uh, a person like myself can feel so good about their life, amen, is because I know that I'm actually functioning in the work of faith. Amen? Yeah. I ain't bothered by nobody. I ain't upset with nobody. I ain't got nothing to do with nothing. I, I, ain't, I ain't got no problems. I ain't got no issues because I got works of faith. Amen? Now, organizations want you to get caught up in service. They, you know, they, you know they, they want you to get caught up in all these titles and all this stuff. Fine. If people want that, that's fine. That don't have nothing to do with the kind of works you got to have of faith. Now, what are works of faith? Now, I just had you underline it. Let's go back to our basic scripture for this series, which is found in James 2 and 14. I want you to put James 2 and 14 back on there. Because, see, we're trying, to be, we're trying to be Sunday morning wonders and blunders through the week. I came to church so God ought to bless me. What that got to do with anything? You ain't got no work. You got to have some works. When you, come, you don't come to church to satisfy a quota. You come to church to exhibit these works of faith. That's why you're here. Praise God. See, I don't have the same crowd now, now that all the show is over. See, when long as we had the Easter program and all the production and all the show, I had a crowd. When it came time to show God who it really is, you, you even the Bible, well, not y'all, but even the Bible says it fell off midday picking because now, now all the show is over. 
because the people is just a stroke of the ego. This ain't got nothing to do with God. It got something to do with you and your ego. You and your ability to want to be seen or to identify. That don't have nothing to do with faith. And then with a straight face, you want to be mad at people who are blessed, who may be demonstrating works of faith, and all you was doing was demonstrating works of the flesh. Because you want to be seen. Come on, somebody. No, no, no. That's not how you get blessed. You don't get blessed by trying to be seen. You get blessed by works of faith. Look at what the Bible says. Go to James 2 and 14. It says, what doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he have faith and have not works? There's the question right there. What does it profit a person to say that they got faith and they don't have works? If there's no works, what are you doing? Amen? Let me go back up there because it left the screen for some reason. I don't know why. James asks, asks the question, can faith, can faith save him? See, where's your, where's your demonstration? See, just, let's talk about the four foundations of your faith. Y'all ready? Yeah, I gave it to you last week. Hear the word, speak the word, Excuse me. Hear the word, believe the word, speak the word, do the word. Amen? Once again, hear the word, believe the word, speak the word, do the word. You ain't doing the word when you want to click. You ain't doing the word when you mad at people. You ain't doing the word when you acting funny. You ain't doing the word when you covetous. You ain't doing the word when you walking with people who are sinners and you talking about you go to church. That ain't doing none of the word. So therefore, your faith is non-existent. Because if there are no works, then how can faith alone save you? You talking, but there is no evidence. If you say you love your husband, but you got three boyfriends, you don't love him. If you say you love your wife and you got a side chick, you say you love your wife. You tell people you love your wife, but your actions speak something else. You're not in a marital covenant. It's broken. Even though you got the ring on your finger, there is no faith. There is nothing demonstrated that says you are in covenant. Same way with God. I go to church. I know God is real. Then why do you cuss? Why do you fornicate? Why do you hate people? Why are you jealous of people? Why are you acting funny with people? Why you can't speak to people? Come on. That's one plus one equal two. Yeah. Our people come into church knowing good and well they don't like people. That, that, that's, that can, <laughs> your speech alone can't save you. Mm -mm. No. You got to hear the word, you got to believe the word, you got to speak the word, and then that last one, you got to do the word. Can I get a witness in here? James asked the question, so what does it profit? So what are you gaining? You still suffering through your private battles while you mad at somebody else, while you jealous of somebody else. You got to straighten it out, church. When you're talking about faith to believe, you've got to believe that God will answer prayer. Amen. But prayer got to come from a real place. Hello? So he says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and you say, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, but you don't give them what they need, what did it profit? Be encouraged. I'm still hungry. The Lord going to bless you. I'm still cold. Where was your faith? Where was your works? What did you do? You spoke nice to them, but you didn't meet no need. Hello? You mean tell me you don't have enough faith to believe that if you give somebody $5, God will bless your money? They need a sandwich, then a prayer. Come on. People need a hug, then a prayer. They need some encouragement, then a prayer. Amen. Amen. 16, if one of you say, depart in peace, 
be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you giving those things with the needful for the body, what does it profit? 17, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead. It's alone. You ain't doing no making a lot of noise. All these old spiritual Facebook posts and you in the club, you ain't doing making a lot of noise. Ain't nobody taking you seriously. Ooh, going to church is a flex. You ain't doing making noise. You ain't making noise. Because you don't believe it in your heart. There's no proof of what you're saying. Can I get a witness? You can't, you can't. <laughs> that's like telling Jesus, and that's what y'all do too. He knows you watching. That's like telling Jesus, I do this, but I ain't doing that. Uh-uh, you got to do the whole thing. But you know, we break it up into pieces so we can be lazy. We break it up into what we want it to be so we can do what we want. Then it says, this is where I'm going. Yea, a man may say thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Anybody know what the works are? Anybody? No? Nobody know what the works are? Go ahead. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Did you listen to midday? That's what <laughs> you cheating. <laughs> I know the sound was kind of bad. So, uh, yeah, yeah. See, what I'm talking about. Let, you're right. You're on the right track. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Here are your works. You want to write them down because some. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Those are manifestations of the baptism in the Holy Ghost, as 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 outlined in Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit, if you will. So here are your works. You want to write them down because you want to know what they are because that you want to be clear on what they are. Then I'm going to tell you what they are not. I read you in 2 Thessalonians 1.11 talking about faith works. What are so-called faith works? Here they are. Uh -huh. uh, works and service? Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it. So you got, you got prayer. I admonish you to put these somewhere. You can go back and read them in your phone, write them down, paper something. You got prayer. You got fasting. Tithing. Prayer. Fasting. Tithing. Love. Study. Praise, worship, am I going too fast? Obedience. Those are the works of faith. Those are the works of faith that is outlined in Scripture. The Lord gives us instructions to do all of those things unto him. Service, Missionary Don't kind of hit on it. Service is unto man. Faith works, as outlined in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 11, and then in this, this diatribe here in James. These are works of faith because these cause you to get out of the flesh. See, people talking about, oh, I'm on the praise team. You also are drunk. You also a liar. You also got two men you frequent. You got three women. See, don't 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 mistake what you call service with works. Romans 12 and 1 says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of God, you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So it's the least you could do is take your talent and bring it up in here. But that ain't no faith work. That, because let me tell you why. 
we going to be saved whether y'all sing or not. <laughs> if you want to know the truth, the first time I got saved twice, but the first time I got saved, I wasn't even in church. I was out there in the projects on Carbon Road, and a preacher ministered to me, and I got saved at my cousin's house. Wasn't no music, wasn't no preacher, wasn't no altar. The altar was right there where I made my mind up at. Don't them that got people saved on the street. Turning them and got people saved on Clown Road and Pasadena. Keep, quit thinking that it got to be music and a praise team and all this stuff for people to get saved. No, that is your service to God and an organization. You know why? Because a sinner can't do faith works out of purity, but you can give service to God and be a rank sinner. Are y'all hearing me talk? You know how much strange fire go up to God from people who think they're doing something every week on these, on these instruments, on these praise teams, in these pulpits? Come on. I'm an adjutant. Thank you for your service. Well, I run the media and sound. Thank you for your service. I'm an usher. I'm a greeter. I'm on the praise team. Man, I cook all. Thank you for your service. That ain't got nothing to do with worship to God. That ain't got nothing to do with the fact you don't come to prayer on 7 o'clock on first Saturdays. That ain't got nothing to do with the fact that you can't love unconditionally. You are just giving God your reasonable service. Amen? God asks us for our service, and he pays us with eternal life. Your job asks you for your service, and they pay you biweekly. Yes. Faith. You don't want the faith works? Prayer. Fasting. Tithing. Love. Study. Worship. Praise. Love. And obedience. Fasting, thank you, fasting. Because, yes, uh-huh. Uh-huh, Kevin finna give it to you, Kevin finna do it. Yeah, but he already there, so yeah. And maybe because they didn't know any better or didn't cut or have certain knowledge, they said they really made works as synonymous with salvation. We do it now. You know, so is that something God would wink at? Because, you know, when you first get saved, you coming in off the street or you or not maybe off the street, you need to do this. You need to do to get in the choir, get on the usher board. You know, stay busy because and we know why you need to stay busy so that um, to keep you from going back to sin. Let's talk about that. Okay. Let's, I'm serious. Let's talk about that. Back then, the service came with faith works. When I was in the choir, we had prayer first. We had testimony. We worshiped God in the praise, in the choir rehearsal. We gave. We, we gave offering. Now, these people don't even rehearse. They don't even want to rehearse. But they want to be seen. They want to come up here and look deep in these lights and carry on because we still doing this. Back then, the old church knew that if you gave service, they was going to put the faith works in the service. The usher board used to pray for service. I remember seeing that. You don't see that no more. The choir prayed before every church service. That's gone. You don't have choirs anymore. Very seldom. Praise team ain't praying. They can barely get up here on time. I mean, what? I'm not, I'm not talking that, that that's germane to this church. I'm talking about, you remember that time we was at that convocation and the praise team was 50, 40 minutes late? They downstairs drinking Starbucks? These folks are out of their mind. See, when they put us in the stuff back then, they had faith in it. There was going to be praise. There was going to be, and there was going to be love. They was going, you know, remember when we used to have musicals back in the day, they had a preacher? 
They had inspiration to speak. All that's gone. Now musicals are full of homosexuals with a bunch of booty bumping boys all dancing the same way. It's the truth, anywho. So, so you, so, so yeah, they, they had a reason why they put us in service, but they have faith works to go with it. Now we've left that. So now the goal is how we sound, how we look, how we portray. There's no more, there's no more onus. I'm going to get in trouble when I say this. There's no more onus on what we really should be doing. And the other thing is we still making this stuff about works. It's too many works. It's, it's too much stuff in this organization that ain't got nothing to do with salvation. I saw a hand over here first. Did I? No? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, in everything. Yeah, yeah. And see, what happened with that was, to my earlier point about faith works. So when we stopped inviting God and everything, then the love left. Now everybody jealous. See, when I was coming up, we had fellowship dinner every first and third at Faith Temple. Because he was in Saginaw, they had fellowship, fellowship dinner second and fourth. You try to have fellowship, and you can have dinner. You ain't got to charge people. You know, ain't nothing wrong with fundraising. People, you know, ain't nothing wrong with it. But if you have dinner now, people going to walk out, I don't want to eat with them. Why are you in church with me? What is your problem? You can go to work with all of these racist dogs and all this stuff, but when it comes to... But when it comes to church, I, want, I, don't, I, I get in and get out. I tell you what, just stay out. Because that's the wrong vibe in the Lord's house. I know I got this stuff right. It, that's what hinders miracles. That's what hinders, hey God, shout out to Allah. God don't come in confusion. If we would line up in faith and everybody believe God, everybody, those things I just told you what works out. If everybody's praying, not scrolling, if everybody's fasting in their own personal lives, if we're all tithing, all things that God talked about in his word, if we all would get into praise, if we all would get into worship, if we all, on your own time, like you should, like I do, have to study your word. If everybody came in here with that premise to obey not only the word, but the man of God, if we all had that mindset, woo, and that's the mindset we came up under. And that's why we saw miracles. Because if somebody came to the altar on Sunday and said, they just diagnosed me or whatever, them old men, they, that, all right, that's what they loved. Give me the all. You're going to be healed. The doctor was just going to confirm what they told you that night. You couldn't have a healing service back in the day and have room in the church. We have a healing service now. People say, Pfft. And they're sick emotionally, they're sick financially, they're sick mentally, they got all kind of sickness. And we don't even believe God to heal it. Do you really believe God for debt cancellation or are you just hoping? It's going to happen if you believe it, but you got to have, now, now don't get me wrong, watch this, you, you want to you you hear this point. Your service gets blessed because of your faith works. Now, the Bible is right. God reigned on the just as well as the unjust. But the favor, the favor of your service is tied to your faith works. So if I'm on the praise team and I really am saved, then I'm ahead of the folks that's with me on here that ain't saved. <laughs> if I really am a saved usher and I'm not slipping outside getting a sip of black velvet and then come back in getting on the dough, then I'm ahead of everybody, see. see. Ain't none of you in here doing service that we can smell liquor on your breath. Or all of a sudden you live around people who smoke. Y'all know I got this stuff right. You got to know what faith works are and what your service is. Man, I've been out there shoveling the snow. That don't mean you say. It, 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 that's your, why would you not want to get the snow away from the dough so the saints can come into the Lord's house? Why would you not want to beautify the Lord's house? Why would you, it don't matter what I do extra. Digging right on them ain't, ain't paying me every time I do something extra. Every time I come in here and clean up or, 
or not that, you know, we got a custodian, but if I come in, because if I see something out of place, I'm going to fix it right then in the Lord's house. I'm going to go get a dolly or something and do it myself. I'm going to sweep up the floor. I'm not going to go to Deacon Owens and Deacon right out there and say, well, you know, I swept the auxiliary room today because they had an event in there and didn't even have enough nerve to, to sweep it up. I'm just going to sweep it up because that's the least I can do for God, saving me and bringing me out of being, hello? See, a lot of y'all don't, see, I ain't forgot where God done brought me from. So I don't need, I don't need no, I don't need to be celebrated because I swept the flow. I swept it because I want the Lord's house to be right. And because I do live right, he'll bless the fact that I swept the flow. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Yes. Excellent point. Excellent point. Now, what happens is this. Many times when it comes to faith and believing, and I got to get a couple of scriptures here and I'll be concluding. We have, to, we have to really figure out who qualifies to do what. And what does it mean? You know, and I, and I mentioned this last night, just in case anybody was foggy in the, in the church that I've been pastoring in about a year. When, when, Jesus, when Jesus told the disciples... Receive ye the Holy Ghost. What did that mean? Well, what it meant was is that you will receive a regenerated heart. And with that comes the Holy Ghost. Not the baptism, but the Holy Ghost. Now, let me ask you a question. If a per- let me just use Earl since you just walked in late. If Earl walks up to this altar... And let's just say he empties out all his weed. He ain't got none. Let's just say he, let's just say he cries out to the Lord, I want to be saved. Hello? Forgive me for every sin, Lord. And he, give, and he give it up and he lift up his hand. He don't receive the baptism, but he gets saved. God forbid. He walks out the door, T-bones and dies. You going to tell me he missed heaven? Mm-mm. You know why? Because he received Jesus, and he received what them disciples said, because remember now, the disciples wasn't always saying like they uphold be. So when Jesus came back, he breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, mind you, this is after he tells the thief on the cross, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Because Again, he had not left, so the comforter had not come. So he, so he went to heaven with Jesus because he received him right then. He was regenerated. Follow what I'm saying? But then what Jesus said is, I'm going away. So, so now when you receive me, you'll receive a portion, but it's going to take the baptism to keep you, which means this. The minute I get saved, I have an anointing. I don't have all I need but I have an anointing because I'm saved. So the Lord receives us at that very moment. So now, because of that, I got, I got, I'm saved. I got Jesus on the inside. But you're going to need the Holy Ghost to stay saved. So now, can that person who's living saved be in a ministry that invokes or is responsible for invoking the Spirit? I believe so. I believe so. Now, if they're in sin, no. Go right here. No, I'm, you, you know I don't, I don't, but you know I don't agree with that. If a person is fornicating, they can't sing up here. Now, now I know it. Now, if y'all harboring fugitives, y'all let me know. If y'all aiding and abetting, let me know. Because what do you mean? I mean, if you know somebody in sin and you ain't saying nothing, let me know. Because I'm telling you, if they up here and they fornicating, or they done turned into a homosexual or a lesbian, trust me, I don't know it. When I do know it, now don't get super deep. Well, why don't you do it? Maybe God wants you to tell me. <laughs> Maybe God wants to trust you with this one. 
If he, don't worry, he, I'm going to know anyway. Don't get me wrong. Either way it go, I'm going to know. But like I said last night, if I know a musician is fornicating, they're done. Anybody responsible for invoking the presence of the Holy Ghost, amen, got to be clean. Amen. That's different. The praise team is different than the person cutting the grass. That's different than the person that may be doing work. I see you, Cam, out there. Now, that's where the old church was at, to your point. When a person came to the Lord and was trying to get with the Lord, they would put them on outside duty to keep them around the church. Amen. They didn't let them lay hands on nobody. You know, they, they couldn't do nothing that involved the things of the Spirit. But we don't throw people away, am I right? Yeah, we, we want to keep people coming. But you can't, You got to be clean to be up here. You got to be clean to be over there. You got to be clean to be up here. I ain't even had no filthy missionaries and stuff. You got to be clean. It hurt, but I, I didn't let a musician go because of that. Nice person. I hated it. It was my fault. We didn't vet him enough. But when I found out, I said, man, I don't mean you no harm, but I can't, I can't do that. I cannot, I cannot let you shack and play. I didn't mean no harm. And I didn't want to be mad, but it was too bad. But that's, I, 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 you got you to gotta be holy. And you got to be doing faith works if you're in leadership. Did I, did I? Okay. Go ahead, man. Can they what now? Can they hear the rapture? It depends on how long it's been. And the reason why I say that is because, again, I don't mean no harm when I say this. When I was talking earlier about demonstration, you, we got to understand something. And I said this earlier. We make, we make allowances. These people doing it again. It's almost 730. They ain't in. I don't know what's going on back there, but they better end it and come on here. I'd be trying to tell people. We make allowances for our flesh. The Lord don't. I can't see nowhere in Scripture where the Lord makes allowances for our flesh. We do it. So, to your point about the rapture, people say they say, how long are you going to be saved before you get the Holy Ghost? So you, you, you might miss it because you, you saying you say, but you will never come to prayer. You know, I know a whole lot of people go here and say they say, but I don't see no evidence of it. Because showing up on Sunday is not evidence that you say. You, you can't make Wednesday. Your tithing record is zero. You don't come to prayer on Saturday morning. You ain't never on the prayer line. What is the, what is the, what is the proof? What faith work can I even point to? And a lot of you younger ones who've been raised here, you know I have taught you all tithing. Y'all don't even do it. You know I've taught you prayer. I've taught you fasting. I've taught you time. It's better you've been here any amount of time. And for me to watch y'all grow into adulthood and get certain places and then turn your back on what I taught you, that does not feel good. But you're going to reap what you sow. Because you deliberately saying to your teaching, Hebrews 6, yeah, I done felt the anointing in that church. I done seen everything. But I'm grown now, and I'm going to turn my back on it. So Hebrews 6 say you crucify Christ afresh when you do that. Amen? Because a lot of you young adults have been here since y'all were teenagers, and you've seen the power of God. You've seen God move in here. You've seen miracles. You, you've seen it. But yet and still, to your point, Cam, you, you're trying to navigate this life without the baptism. You can't be successful in this life, Cam, without the baptism. So I can't answer whether a person would miss it or not. Because this saved that, not talking to you per se, but this saved, your generation say ain't the saved that I know. I mean, it just ain't. This, this 30 and down salvation that these young people got, I don't understand that. Because it comes with no works. So if you don't have no works of faith, what, because you ain't getting none right now, you saved? The minute somebody lets you have something, you're going to slip. Two or three times a month. I mean, it, what, what save are you? Y'all don't like each other. Y'all can't get along with each other. You're always slamming somebody on Facebook, always assassinating somebody. In church on Sunday, you got a TikTok and a Snapchat that say you a rank whore. I mean, what? So where is the definition? 
why be a hypocrite? It's better to be one or the other. I know I got this right. So I can't answer that question because I done seen a whole lot of folks walk up here and cry and carry on, talking about they say, and then your Snapchat say something else the same day. Your Instagram say something else the same day. So without, without faith works, beloved, you don't, you don't have. You don't have no proof, you say. You think you, you, a Facebook post is proof? <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, just because you said it is proof? No, it's not. If I can get up, and it, it, <laughs> if I can get up and be here for 7 a.m. prayer, why you can't? You don't want to. It ain't that you can't, you don't want to. If you can work third shift, stay up all night, you can get up being prayer at 7 o'clock. You don't, want, you, don't, you, you don't want to do it. If I can tithe off of everything come my hand, you can't. You just choose not to. This ain't no argument. This ain't no condemnation. People just, you, you, grown people choose to do what they want to do. Yeah. So you either have faith works or you don't. But please don't mistake your reasonable service with faith works. I don't care how much you praise dance. I don't care how many skits y'all put on. If, if there's no faith works behind it. Now, again, you, you brought up a good point, Cam, because here's the thing. Now, I taught this when Ty Tribbett was talking all that foolishness. I taught this. Remember, Jesus told 500 people to go to the upper room. 500. Only 120 went. Hear what I'm saying to you. Now, when they got in there, how long was they in the upper room? Anybody know? I taught y'all this. Now, see, y'all don't write this stuff down. I keep telling you, I write it down. They was in there 10 days. While they was in the upper room, what were they doing? Studying, praying, pray, all them faith works that I just told you what the faith works were. They were studying, they were praying. They were praising God, loving each other. 120 decided to go. He told 500. How long were they in there? Ten days. How y'all walking around two years and ain't got the baptism? No faith works. It's not hard. Y'all are degree. Y'all are smart people in here. He tells 500 people to go. Only 120 goes. That 120 is only in the room ten days. And the Holy Ghost falls. You been, people around here been around here talking about they saved two, three, four years. Ain't speaking in tongue. That's because, so to your question about if a person saved, can they be saved and, and not get the rapture? What did the scripture say? The scripture say the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. Now, let's go back to Earl. <laughs> let's keep using Earl until he get it right. Earl comes up here, get saved. Get rid of all his sin, get rid of all his women, come up here and get saved. All one of them. He mean it. He mean it. He mean it from his heart. Y'all ain't talking. He walk out the door feeling good about life. I done gave up all my sin. For real. Wham, the trumpet sounds. Is he gone or is he staying? He gone. He's out of here. Because he got that, he got that portion. But when Jesus breathed on them, he didn't say, y'all set. When he breathed on them, then he said, now go tarry. Until you be what? And do with what? Power from on high. And they got that through those faith works. Amen. You want to be blessed by God? You got to have faith. And you got to remember, it's not of yourself. You got to have prayer. Write them down. I'm going to give them to you again. These are the works of faith. It ain't on the praise team. It ain't being a deacon. It ain't, it ain't being an armor bearer. It's not cleaning up the parking lot. It ain't being a church custodian. It ain't none of that. Ain't none of that got nothing to do. Or it ain't being over. I'm over the youth department. I ain't none of the, I don't care. Thank God for all my department auxiliary leaders, but that ain't got nothing to do with faith. That's your reasonable service as outlined in Romans 12 and 1. And, that's, and, that, and your reasonable service is what? 
filthy rags. Because you can't come nowhere near close to what Jesus did on that cross. And that's why we okay missing church and stuff. Because we, all, trust me, we get to the point we think I done done enough. I don't care what nobody say. How you going to be undone enough? Lord, have mercy on your soul and your belief system. Hear how the faith works. Prayer. For those of you that's coming in, write them down because you're going to need them. Because some of y'all think your service is works. No, it ain't, Jack. And the services that was supposed to be paid in the Bible was the preacher and the musicians. That's book. That's book. That's Old and New Testament. Hello? Should not he that preached the gospel live with the gospel? Do you know the pastor really ain't supposed to work? This is his job. See? See, I give y'all four, five fresh sermons. Prayer. Pr- yeah, go ahead. Being a fisher of men? Yeah, like That's your reasonable service. service. Uh huh. Ain't got nothing to do with faith work. Let me tell you why. There's a whole lot of folk that brought people to church. They got converted. They still ain't saved. Ooh. The folk that brought them. All right, come on, we got to, prayer, <laughs> praise, tithing, fasting, studying, love, praise, worship, obedience. Those are the works of faith. Now, Susan Turner brought up something earlier about meekness and kindness and all that. And I said, those are the fruit of the Spirit. That's what you demonstrate when you have the baptism. When it said, now the, now the works of the Spirit are these. See? Now that's baptism. <laughs> Amen. See, a lot of times we confuse regeneration with baptism. Baptism is the fourth and final step. So there's repentance, there's justification, excuse me, there's repentance, there's regeneration, there's justification, and then baptism. I repent for my sin. Hello? Once I repent, I get regenerated. New heart, new mind, everything. Portion of the Holy Ghost. Justification is my holy life. I live holy so I can receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. You see that? That's your four steps. So. Let me get this last scripture. I'm going to get one more scripture because I, I got to deliver my. So that last scripture I want to give you is Ephesians 2 and 8. Put it up there, somebody. Because we got to always remember this ain't got nothing to do with you. You can't work your way into heaven. Now, we got, we got a lot of Elder Morgan. There was an older gentleman used to go here named Elder Charles Morgan. And he could say some stuff, couldn't he? He could. He, I used to worship with him at, at, at Bountiful Love. He could say some stuff. One time, I don't forget, was that this, was that this church at Bountiful Love? When he said that about the plaque. That was here. We was having some, we was having, you remember that, George? We was having something. We had just moved in here and he was here. It's too much, <laughs> it's too much plaque in the service. We said, plaque? What is plaque? You know the stuff that mess up your teeth? When you got too much plaque on your teeth, your teeth decay and die. What are you talking about, Elder? He said, it's too much plaque. In other words, he was saying the program was too long. It was too much stuff. In these programs, sometimes we have too much stuff before we get to God. Amen? And so what we think is faith work, you know, we really believe calling these folk names is, <laughs> they really believe that's a work of faith. It's not. All these services we have in the Lord's house, we need to end this stuff and get on to Jesus. I don't, want, I, don't want, I don't want to sit in the Lord's house for two hours while we give honor to folk. Can we just get on to the Savior? That's what I want to do. It's too much. Now we're going to hear from this one. Sit down. Now we're going to hear from that one. Don't want to hear you. Now we're going to be observing. Don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear none of that. Put the, put the announcements on the screen. I don't need nobody waddling up there trying to read something. Put that stuff on digital so we can, and put it at the end so we can get where we're going. I know I'm in trouble. 
I know. But if you want plaque in these surfaces, that stuff ain't got nothing to do with God. And the show ain't works because we all vexed. You didn't vex me while I'm trying to praise God. For by grace, y'all see this? Watch this. For by grace are you saved through faith. That through faith means through your works, prayer, praise, fasting, tithing, love. That's the demonstration of faith, those works. That's how you get grace. That's how you live saved. Amen. You can't live saved in disobedience. It got to be believing that. That's why James said, I'll show you my faith by my works, not through what I'm saying. It's my works that proves who I am. Amen. If I'm going to be a pastor, I ought to prove it. If I'm going to be saved, I ought to prove it. Am I right? And that, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Last question. Go ahead. Oh, man. <laughs> I got to pick that up next week because that's big. But you can go on the Saginaw page. I hit that last night. Faith sometimes has three uh, definitions. Okay? What is a noun? Person, place, a thing. What is a verb? Action word. Your faith don't come alive to your work. So the faith... That faith in Hebrew has the ability to be a noun, a verb, and an adjective at the same time. But I have to bring that out next week. I have to bring that out. We'll start right there so you can understand that. God, we love you and we thank you and we praise your name. You're good to us, Lord, and you're good to us all the time. I pray for every person on the sound of my voice, every person that's watching God, that they would have faith to believe. To believe, God, that you can heal the sick, you can raise the dead, you can cancel debt, you can make our way whole, you can make our bodies whole, you can touch our minds, you can rekindle love, you can strengthen me to forgive. You can do anything but fail. I give your name praise, honor, and glory for it. Now make believers out of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap those hands and give the Lord praise, everybody. I challenge you today to sow a small seed of just $29. Give me a pen, sir. If today is your day to tithe, please do so. Don't miss this opportunity to obey the Lord. Amen. 10% of everything comes in your hand belongs to God. The ways to give are on the screen. Cash app, dollar sign, COF Church, Give Lafay, Cathedral of Faith Church, Flint. Please, ma'am and sir, those of you watching, please sow that $29 seed because when you sow here, you sow in the good ground. Amen. I say you sow in the good ground. I need an envelope if somebody will, please. Now, Sunday, I'll be giving you instruction on how we're going to park next week because construction on our parking lot will start Monday. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so I'll be giving you uh, instructions on how we'll park next week. It'll take all week to get it repaired and dunk need a hand back there. It's going to look real nice. Amen. And so we've just been waiting on the weather to break, and it's, thank God it looked like it done broke. <laughs> Amen. I know that's right. Uh, and we honor the Lord. See, Y'all should be thanking God that the snow over. Absolutely. That is over early. Y'all should be thanking God that the ball is off. If y'all don't, I will. I'll run around. I'm about ready to run now. We ain't had the ballers on in 10 days. Amen. I count down the days, 11. Amen. I can smile and laugh at consumers because they ain't getting all that money out of them ballers off. They are still off, ain't they? Yeah, don't play around. Amen. All right. They were talking about they was a little cool in the back. That one. Never mind. I'll keep that to myself. You do a space heater, dog. We ain't cutting them boilers on. I am not cutting them boilers on. I don't care what go down. They're going to have to dress warmly back then. I ain't cutting them on. Uh -uh. No sorry, Bob. You know why I say that? Because we had to keep them on last year till May. And I cried. Uh -uh. This year they've been off about the whole month of April, and I praise God. And I'm asking God to let it stay in the 50s and 60s so I can keep them off. If you give them my credit card, Deacon Reinhardt is up here in the front. Hey, Amen. you can come now. Everybody standing, praise the name of the Lord. I am super excited about what God is doing. Amen. I mean, he's doing some great things. I'm getting ready to share a whole lot of great things with you. Earl, are you still holding on? Huh? Keep on keeping on.
Take that tithe and offer, lift it to the Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this seed tonight. Thank you for every tithe, every offering that's going before you now. I pray for special blessings on every person that's giving tonight and that they would receive their prayers, be answered, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Bishop, I don't have $29. Get as close to it as you can. Just don't let your name be zero. God knows what you have. God, God knows what you don't have. God knows what you have and won't give. Bless the Lord. You can't go wrong blessing the Lord. That's what I like. Yeah, keep playing, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, even Jazz here. Amen. We got a line, Doc. I like it. I like it. I, what's that in your hand? Did you, did you forget to turn yours in? Is that your offering? Oh, okay. You my man. You my man. Wait a minute. Where Julius at? Where Juju at? Stand up. Show yourself. Show yourself. All right, sit down. Make sure he here. Uh, have to keep certain bit. Make sure you know what's going on up in here. Hey, Amen. I saw muggins. I didn't see. All right. Bless you tonight. Listen, I got one of the greatest minds in the church world coming here Saturday. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Bishop Rodri Hennings is somebody. Amen. I'm telling you what I know. He's going to be talking about education. He's going to be talking to the leaders on how to lead He's going to talk to us about how to study the Bible. I mean, you don't want to miss this, so please make sure that you are here. Be cool, First Lady. Make sure you are here at 9 o'clock sharp. It's not going to take up your whole day because, for one, he got to fly back to Buffalo, New York. But um, I want leaders. Now, look, if you're over any kind of department or auxiliary, I really, really am asking you to be here because you're supposed to be. It's our quarterly leadership conference. But if you want to just come and be inspired as well, you come on and have a little continental breakfast with us. De Deborah, you ain't got nothing to do, so you come on be here Saturday morning, amen, at 9 o'clock. And she's looking at me like, I don't want to come. You come on up through here. Don't try to stop me on my way out and ask me. I'm telling you now, you're welcome to come, amen. Everybody stand. What'd she say? She said she'll be here. That was she I know it. I know. I know, Deborah. I can tell her she was looking at me. 9 o'clock, amen. And please, African-Americans, please be on time, amen. <laughs> please be on time. Uh, I don't see them tonight. All right. God, look on us now as we leave this place, but not your presence. Put your own protection around us. God, lead us and guide us in all truth and knowledge. We be careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory. God, please bring us back at the appointed time, not the loss of any. In Jesus' name, we pray. What I say unto one, I say unto all. Watch. Pray. Say it. Live holy. Resist the devil. He'll flee from you. Amen. And do a good job again like y'all did last week. Bring somebody to church with you this Sunday. Greet somebody, then you're dismissed.